people can't hear you. Oh, man, with the push to talk. <laughs> well, it has been a while, and it is November 17th, 2022, and this is Book Club. We are reading the Poetic Eddas, and tonight... Um, <laughs> We're reading, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. I'm going to let Jay take it away. Sorry. <laughs> Helga Visca Horvath Sonar. Um, concerning Horvath and Sigurlin, a king was named Horvath. He had four wives. One was named Offlid. Their son was named Hethen. The second was named Sarath and their son was named Humlung. The third son was named Sinjorth and their son was named Heimling. King Horvath had sworn an oath to marry the most beautiful woman he saw. He learned that King Sofnir had a daughter who was the most beautiful of all named Sigurlin. King Horvath had a man at his court named Ismund. And Ismund's son, Alti, went to ask for Sigurlin's hand in marriage to King Horvath. Alti stayed the whole winter with King Sofnir. King Sofnir had an important follower named Fonmar. He was the foster father of Sigurlin. Fonmar had a daughter named Alof. Fonmar told Alti that the girl would not be married to King Horvath, and then Alti rode away. Alti stood one day in a grove, and he had heard a bird sitting in a tree branches above him. The tree had heard Alti's men say that there were no women more beautiful than King Horvath's wives. The bird called, and Alti listed to what it said. The bird said... Did you see Singerling? Svesnivin's daughter? I don't know how to say it. Sorry, guys. The most beautiful woman in the entire world. She's more beautiful than Hornvath's wives, though they seem beautiful enough to the men at Lesland. Alti said, Will you say more to Alti, son of Lith- Ithmond, you wise remembering bird? The bird, the bird said, I would if you, young man, would give me a sacrifice. I'll choose what I want from the king's household. Alti said, Don't Alti choose. Said- <laughs> Don't choose Horvath, nor his sons, nor the king's lovely brides, the wives of King Horvath, but we'll make a good deal. That's the way of friends. The bird said, I will choose a temple, many altars, and golden horned cows from the king's household. If what I say brings Singlon to sleep in arm his arms, in his arms, if that woman marries him of her free will, this was before Alti's journey to King Sa. Spa- Spa- I'm gonna. Svafnir. When Alti came home, King Horvath asked him his news, and Alti said, We had trouble. The errand was not accomplished. We wore out our horses on the high mountains, and then we had to wade the river Samorn, and then Svafnir's ring decked daughter, the girl we went there to get, was denied to us. Horvath asked them to go on a second time, 
Then he went along himself this time. And when they went up on a mountain, they saw wild fires, wildfires burning in Svavavland, and they saw huge clouds of dust kicked up by horses' hooves. Then the king rode down from the mountain and spent the night by a river. Atli stood on guard, and he went over the river. There he found a house. A large bird sat on the house and kept watch, but it had fallen asleep. Atli threw a spear at the bird and killed it. In the house, Adli found Sigurlin, the daughter of King Svafnir, and Elof, the daughter of Jarof Ranmar, and he took them away from there. Hrothmar, another king who had courted Sigurlin, had killed King Svafnir and then burned and robbed the country. Jarof Ranmar had turned himself into an eagle, and he had been guarding the woman with his magic. King Hjordvaf married Sigurlin, and Atli married Elof. Kjordvarth and Sigurlin had a big handsome son. He was quiet and no name suited him for a long suited him for long. One day the boy sat on a mound and he saw nine Valkyries riding, and one of them stood out from the others. She said It'll be a it will be a while, Helgi, before you roll. The golden golden rings and the lands of Roth. Even though you're always silent, a young eagle will cry on the battlefield after you. You'll show your courage, warrior. Helgi said, You named me Helgi. What gift will you give me to accompany my name giving, you lovely woman? I think you know what everyone's names are. But I will not accept my name unless I get you as a gift along with it. The Valkyrie said, I know where there lie 46 swords in Singen Shlom, but one of those shield breaking blades is better than the others. It's decked with gold. There is a ring in the hilt and courage in its middle, and there is fear in its point. Fear of the man who wields it. A blood-colored serpent decorates the blade. Another serpent bites its tail on the hilt's hand guard. A king was named Illimi. He had a daughter named Svava. She was a Valkyrie who rode on the waves and, and winds. It was she who gave Helga his his name, Helgi his name, and who defended him in many battles afterwards. Helgi said, Torvath, you are not a wise king. Not a good leader of men, though you are wise enough. You've burned the halls of other kings who had given you no provocation. But Hrothmar will come to power and own the rings our people have owned. That man fears no one in his life. He thinks he'll own our inheritance when we're all dead. Horvath said he would let Helgi have an army, if Helgi would avenge his mother's father. King Svafnir, Svaf, 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 can't say it. Then Helgi found the sword Svava he told him about, and he and Alti went and killed Harthmir and did many other great warlike deeds. Helgi killed the giant Hadi, where he sat on a hill. Then Helgi and Alti anchored their ships and Hati's sword. Alti stood watch during the first part of the night. Then Har- Hermgarth, the daughter of Hati, said, Who are you, Hati's sword? 
Who are your men in Hattie's Fjord? Your ships are decked with shields. You speak boldly. I think you fear nothing. Tell me the name of your king. Otley said, He is named Helgi, but you cannot do any harm to that fierce man. There are iron ships in his fleet. They are too tough for even a giant woman. What are you named? asked Hark- Hergarth. You strong man. What do people call you? you? Your king must trust you since he lets you stand on the fair ship's prow. I am named Atli, and I will be fierce against you. I have great hate of giant women. I have often stood on the ship's wet prow. I have often killed witch women. And what are you called, you corpse-hungry sorceress, you monster? Name your father, too. You ought to be lying nine miles below the earth, with the tree's roots in you. I am named Himgarth, and and my father is Hati, who I think is the greatest of giants. He had many women, all stolen from their homes before Helgi killed him. Which you've been here by the king's ships. You've waited in the fjord's mouth. You were meaning to give the king's men to Ron if their spears didn't kill you first. Think you've been deluded by a dream, Atley. I see your eyelashes sunk low. My mother lay in wait for the king's ships, and I drowned Gjaltlavarth's sons in the sea. And now you would shout, Alti, if you weren't a geldling. Now I, Hrimgarth, stretch out my neck. You have a coward's heart, Alti, though I think you have a handsome voice. A gelding? You'll think I'm a stallion if you try to get me. I come ashore from my ship. You'll have all your bones broken if I carry out my threats. And you won't lift your tail, Hrimgarth. Come to land, Atli, if you have the courage, and we'll meet in Varen's Bay. I'll straighten out your ribs, boy, if you come within my grasp. I won't leave till the men wake and take over the watch for the king. I can't be sure when you'll come to attack the sh- our ship, you monster. Wake, Helgi, said Hrimgerth. Pay me back for when you killed my father, sleep at my side for one night, and I'll consider the debt paid. Elgi said, only a hairy beast would take you, you're too ugly. But a giant, a very wise giant, the worst kind of lava monster lives in Tholi, and he'd be a good match for you. Himgarth said, Helgi, you'd rather have Swava who ruled the sea last night, that sparkling sea seems stronger than I am. Here the land rises from the sea and holds your feet, and she alone is the reason I couldn't kill your men. Hear me, Hrimgareth, said Helgi. If I'm going to compensate you for your father, tell me more. Was it just one lady who saved my ships, or were there more of them? There were 27, the one rode before them all, a beautiful lady wearing a helmet. Their mares were steered up, dew dripped from their manes into deep, into the deep trenches, like hail upon the high trees when the year turns. I hated all this as I saw it. Look to the east now, Himgarth. I, Helgi, have kept you talking till your death. My fleet is saved on land and on sea, and my men are spared your terrors. It's morning, Hrimgareth. I, Adli, have kept you talking till your death. Now you'll become just a ridiculous standing stone in the sea. 
King Helgi was a great warrior, came to King Eilimi and asked for the hand of his daughter, Svava. Helgi and Svava swore their faithfulness to one another, and they loved each other very much. Svava stayed at home with her father, and Helgi went out on the raids. Svava was still a Valkyrie, as she had been before. Helgi's half-brother, Hethin, also stayed at home with their father, King Hjorvarth, in Norway. One time, Hethin was away from home alone on a winter evening, and he met a giant woman. She was riding a wolf, and she was using snakes as reins. She offered to accompany Hethin. He refused her, and she said, You will repay this at the feast when you make your oaths. That evening there was a feast, and oaths were sworn. The big boar was brought in, and men laid their hands on it and swore oaths as they drank. Hethin swore he would take Svava, daughter of Ialimi, and his brother, Helgi's lover, but later he regretted this oath so much that he's wandered wild roads to the south alone. And eventually he met his brother Helgi. Helgi said, Greetings, Hethin. What news can you tell me from Norway? Young ruler, why are you in exile? Why have you come alone to seek me? A much greater misfortune has befallen me. I swore to take your noble-born bride when I made my oath at the feast. Don't concern yourself, Hethin. The oaths men make while drinking will always prove true. A king has challenged me to a duel, and before three nights have passed, I must meet him at the appointed place. I doubt that I will survive, and then it will look be good if he took Svava. Are you saying, Helgi, that I still deserve your goodwill and gifts from you? It would it would be more befitting if you bloodied your own sword and me than if you gave your enemy peace. Helgi spoke as he did because he suspected he was doomed and that the troll woman that Hethin had been riding had seen riding the wolf was in fact Helgi's own guardian spirit and she had caused Hethin to speak as he had. There was a king named Alf, son of Hrothmar, and it was he who had challenged Helgi to meet him for a duel on Sigursvelar before three nights had passed. Then Helgi said, A dark giant woman rode a wolf. She offered to go with Hethin. She knew that I, Sigurdlund's son would be slain on Sigvar Valar. Then there was a great battle, and Helgi was mortally wounded. Helgi sent Sigar to ride to Svava, Elami's daughter, and he said to her to make haste if he wanted to see Helgi alive. Sigar said, Helgi sent me to you, Svava. He gave me a message. That warrior wants to see you again before the noble man falls dead of his wounds. Svava said, What happened to Helgi, son of Hogvath? This is a terrible sorrow for me, but whether he drowned in the sea or was torn by a sword, I'll pay this back in full to the man who cursed it, who caused it. Sigar said, Helgi. The best king under the sun fell this morning at Frekestein. Ooh. Frekestein. Alf has total victory, although it didn't have to end this way. Oh, he said, Welcome, Svava. This will be our last meeting in life. Spread a blanket beneath my body. A sword has come too near my heart. I ask you, Svava, my bride, if you will heed my dying words, that you will sleep by Hethin, that I will lo- that you will love my young brother. Svava said, Helgi, when you gave me rings, I said this. I said I would never willingly in my life put my arms around another man if he died. Kiss me, Svava, said Hethin. I won't ever return 
to Rogheim or Rothus Fuel before I have avenged Helgi, Horvath's son. That man is the best beneath the sun. It is said that Helgi and Svava were reincarnated. That's where it ends. There's a lot of quiet bookworms tonight. I just be a sickness, that's all. Say that again. I just be of the sickness, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I, I just I have a copy with them, so I did write down where uh Jackson Crawford's version differed from I guess your version. Like in stanza twenty. You had said neck where it said tail and you said yell where it said nay and I just I just wrote it down. It doesn't really have much significance, I guess, but I wrote it down anyway. I had wrote down when I was talking about the bird, I was like, what kind of bird? But then it said eagle later, but I don't think that's the same bird. Hmm. But being that it talked, I would assume that it would be, or talked, I would assume that it would be a raven since they have the ability to mimic human speech. So, and also because of the symbolism of ravens there and it was said to be a smart bird so and those are the ones that are given references to be of some kind of intelligence What's but there? I could be wrong. Um, do, 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 do. it wasn't like that the was first some day. fun critical thinking I try it was fun. I got I got all zony on it when she was talking about it. <laughs> like, I down that little hole there. Sorry. Have any, you're right. No, you're good. So, any questions anybody has about tonight? I know we don't have Gothi with us tonight, but we're all mm -hmm. smart people here. Just like I was drawing some. some parallels to some other classic literature mm -hmm. from it. Um, there was a lot of the same you know, tropes and themes that a lot of like Shakespeare's or um, who wrote the Canterbury Tales? Mm -hmm. yeah, I was thinking Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I was, more of Juliet. I was thinking more of, um, I don't remember the name, but like Joanna, or what the, whatever her name was, the cause of the Trojan War, or whatever, I think, maybe, I don't know. Helen of Troy. <laughs> Helen, yeah. Yeah, somebody knows. Yep, that love triangle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very common theme. That's that's all my mind was doing was just playing like old English literature. Mm -hmm. And we do have a mention of Ran here. That's that's a very rare occurrence. She's not mentioned very often, but Oh. Ran. She is a she's a sea goddess ish. Gozi would disagree with me. <laughs> uh, she's mentioned in here in stanza eighteen. Well, 
Like the way they were talking. The king's ship. She waited for the fort's mouth. You were meaning to get the king's men to ran. Their spears didn't kill you first. Okay. I've never heard of that um, name reference before. Anywhere, like. Yeah, any the two, She doesn't get mentioned just a whole lot. She's one of the one of the deities that there's not a whole lot of references to them. Interesting. I think I found a new rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry you don't feel good, friend. It's okay. Well, has anybody else got anything from this one for us? If not, we'll go ahead and say goodbye to Craig for the night. If I'm correct, um, Ron is the goddess Jotun of um, those who die at sea. So if it was a sailor who died at sea, then they wouldn't end up in Hell, Valhall, or any of the other halls. They go straight to her and Aegir instead yes. of one of the other halls. It's it's a rather interesting, uh, I guess correct. not not different than the word I'm looking for, but. So she's um, Davy Jones' locker. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Basically. But yeah, correct, sir. Correct. I just, I'm bad at words, and being of the sickness Thanks. doesn't help the words. <laughs> Thank you words for enjoying my sass there, Sprinkle. She's Davy Jones. I just, I just like my little bow action I gave you. You put the little bow on there. <laughs> um, no, it, it has... I've read this particular version of the uh, Poetic Edda already, and I've also had him speak it at me through audiobook. Um, but even as I've read it originally and just now, it has very much a introduction feel to it. Like, all right, we've scratched the surface. We're going to dig deeper. <laughs> Is that what we're going to do at next week's book club? Is that what the next grouping is? Deeper, maybe. Yeah. Yep. It is the same thing. It's the first poem of Helgi, Killer of Hunting. So, yeah, it's got the same name. Almost. Yeah, very, very similar. I almost read that one tonight. And... <laughs> I was having difficulties. All right. <sighs> Who wants to say goodbye to Craig? Hi, Craig. Hi, Craig. Hi, Craig. I love you. Thank you for joining, everybody, if you joined us tonight on YouTube and the website. Bye.